Uh, welcome on Professional Movie Reviews. My name is Mark, and I'll be reviewing the last five, four episodes of The Night Of. I already reviewed the first half of the season, now I'm doing the second half of the season. So, I watched them, uh, you know, each week, and then I watched the last one yesterday, and I'm really pumped about it. And the finale was, yeah, let's talk about the finale, and then I went to work for 12 hours. Ugh, I worked today, and I talked, to, I thought about it all day. Then I cracked open this beer, so now I will review it. So, as I already said, I don't know if I did or not, my name's Mark, I'll post it up here. Um, and the way I like to do the TV reviews is I'm going to give you a non-spoilery review of how I felt now, in case you haven't seen it, and then I'm going to get into the, open up the floodgates, and then talk about it heavy. And I'll try to break it down, I'm trying to bring up, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about, the director, then I'll talk about the actors, and then I'll try to bring up, if I have any negatives, I'm going to bring up the negatives, and then that's what I'm going to do. So after I give the non-spoilery review, I'm going to tell, give you my rating between 0 and 5 on my hands here. I'll give it a little hand jab, <laughs> and, uh, and then, yeah, then I'll open up the floodgates. Okay, you got it? You got it. All right, sweet. So... Night of is about um, a guy named uh, Nas, played by Rez Ahmed, who's convicted for a crime, and then John Turturro. I'm not going to get into all the points. So, what did I think about this in a non spoiler way? This is some of the best performances I've ever seen in television. I hope this isn't eligible for the Emmys this next year since it kind of happened right after the Emmys. These, almost everyone in this show is phenomenal. Now, I consider this the best television I've watched this year. And yes, that's including Game of Thrones. I'm considering this the best television I've watched this year. And some of the best television I've ever watched. This is some very, very good shit. The ending is something else. Uh, so we can talk about that once we get to it. And... Yeah, sorry, my computer did something. The ending, um, I'm not going to spoiler it, but it was definitely interesting. And if you're watching this, whether or not you should find out whether or not you should watch it, yes, watch it. HBO, get H I, get H I got HBO now on my phone, and I watch it. I got a little ledge up in my shower, and I like prop it up in my shower, and I watch it before I go to work, and I watch it after work, because I have to shower get after work, because it smells really bad. And... I watch it all the time. That's how I watch my HBO. Watch Night Of, if you haven't seen it. There. Now, what do I feel about it? I think, overall, of this entire season, I'm going to give it a 4.9. These last four episodes, I'm going to give them a 4.9. In the last episode, I'm going to give a 5 out of 5. This was amazing. This was an amazing show. Watch it. Okay, cool. Let's break down and do it. So get out of here if you don't want to be spoiled. Bye. See you later. Bye. So let's talk about the performances and let's get specifics. So uh, where do we leave Nas? Nas is in prison and in episode four... He kind of has to start getting ready for the trial and all this, and he's getting more and more integrated into the prison life, like smuggling in drugs, which I believe is heroin. He starts smoking heroin. Now, I'm not going to go linear throughout the episodes. I just want to talk about Nas. So let's talk about Nas, and I'm going to try not to get into the last episode. I want to talk about that in a whole. So the transformation of Nas... I've talked to a fellow TV watcher, and he disliked it. Good. I'm glad. Because this was real. He wasn't a hero who came out unscathed. He was innocent, and he still paid for it. Because this is real life. Or we're pretty sure he's innocent. Um, we're almost 100% sure. But this is it. Is the justice system, especially how he was treated, he wasn't going to walk out unscathed. Now, am I mad at this character, motorcyclist? 
Am I mad at this character? Absolutely! He makes a lot of really dumb decisions, especially in the first episode, and then later on in the second half of the season, with getting the neck tattoo, with getting the hand tattoos, literally the two places that people are going to see when they're wearing shirts. You, you idiot, like what the heck? And then he's getting buff, he's starting to shave his head, he literally transforms. And I love Rez, Reza Med for that because he looks so different. The ending of this, the way he holds himself, everything, that is acting. And he's acting like a person who went through this. I bought it 100%. Especially, I loved Reza Ahmed from um, uh, Nightcrawler uh, two years ago, three years ago. He was fucking great in that movie. And that was like his first thing ever. He's going to be in a Star Wars movie later this year, Rogue One. And so I'm really interested in this guy's career. So I had to watch the show when it came out. And I'll tell you, I knew he was talented, but holy shit, is this guy talented? And it, this show just proved it. And now, what I was getting at is he doesn't come out unscathed. And it, I guess we'll get to that when we talk about the last episode. But really, his transformation, him doing drugs, his overall body language, I love it. I just love Rez Ahmed. And then let's talk about one of my favorite characters, and I have to look down because I always forget this guy's name, Michael Kenneth Williams. Now, Michael Kenneth Williams played Freddy in this. He's also in one of my favorite TV shows, The Wire, um, uh, and it, where he played... I shouldn't even have tried. I usually know this guy's name, but I'm thinking of Night Of right now. It might come up. Omar. He played Omar in The Wire, and he was amazing in The Wire, and he's amazing in this. So, in order to talk about Nas, I have to talk about uh, Freddy. Because, especially in the last episode, now, he, like, protects him, and he transforms him. He, like, Get me, bring me in drugs, and I'll protect you. Do drugs with me, and I'll protect you. Shit up drugs for me, and I'll protect you. And the whole time, you're like, alright, what's this guy's story? Why is he doing this? And it... The unicorn speech is so kind of cheesy, but it's okay to be cheesy. I'm okay with it. <laughs> this, this show earned a little bit of cheesiness. The unicorn speech of where I smell the innocence off you is what he says. Like, everyone here around here acts innocence. I smell it off you. And you're like a unicorn, and I have to protect you. Yeah. Holy shit. Was, did he, was he right? Not is that just a great speech, which it was, but was he not right of the first couple episodes? He did carry himself that way. Like a little lost puppy who got hit too much. Reza Med's so good at that. And it, later when he transforms, he tries to put on that facade, but really still even with that facade he puts on, he walks up to the guy and he's like, hey... The dude who just came in, he got the shit kicked out of him in the holding. He's like, hey, I got the shit kicked out of me in the holding. Let me know if you need protection. I'll ask my guy. He's still that innocent guy, but he had to do what he had to do to survive Rikers. Loved it. I love that aspect. A lot of people don't like it. I love it. And I'm going to get up to it later. Now, it just comes to Kenneth Michael Williams or Michael Kenneth Williams. Michael Kenneth Williams, Freddie. Holy shit, one tiny negative about him, but as usual, where is this guy in movies? We saw him playing like a Secret Service man in the female Ghostbusters reboot. He needs to be in big parts. He is so good. But one small negative, he can't box worth shit. <laughs> like, you see him like punching the punching bag? Like, uh, uh, uh. yeah, no, terrible. <laughs> terrible, terrible boxer. Moving on. So... Well, let's put a little... Let's get back to Reza Ahmed's character. Let's talk about John. John is my favorite character. I might have said that about Rez, but I was lying. John Turturro's performance... Ah, uh, he's almost the main character. He is absolutely fucking phenomenal in this show. The cat... Oh my god, are those not the best scenes? So let's go back to, I think, like... Episode 4, when he's got the cat in the room, and he's so allergic to cats, and he opens up the door, it throws on the cat toys, it shuts it, puts his ear against the door, and then he just hears, jingle, 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 and he goes, okay. 
walks off. Fuck. That was like the one of the most heartwarming things I've ever seen. Now, and even when he starts to lose doubt in himself, when he starts to lose the hope, the cat was hope. It was symbolism for him knowing he could do this. It's him getting over his fears. Literally, that's what it was. He had to get over his fears to have a cat. His fears of all his rash and all his allergicness, allergies, that's the word I was looking for. And he, even when you knew he was losing hope in the case and they thought they were fucked, he goes and gives the cat off. And he, oh, I love that scene too because he drops the box off and the guy recognized them and the, the kid behind the counter was like, no. And he goes, I don't want to discuss it. Because he knew he was doing something wrong, but he also knew it was hard and he was giving up on that. Spoiler alert for the, I already said spoilers, so fuck off. But the last scene is the best scene in the whole fucking show. When, like, we've been seeing all this terrible shit in prison and everything, but still the show shows us, like, the freaking cat and dog commercials, and we're like, oh, no, now we're sad. And he, like, looks, and you see the cat, and I'm like, oh, my God, I'm going to tear up. I'm going to tear up. And then he, like, gets up and walks off. And then the fucking cat walks across the seat. I went, I like jumped up at my phone like, woo! Like, ah, that was a heck of an ending. So, let's not move. All right, let's move kind of. No, we're not done. Him dealing with his eczema, I believe, his skin condition. It started off as something I didn't care about. And I thought it was really dumb that they were putting so much emphasis on it. But it pulled a... It, it paid off so well of it being when he breaks out, when he gets nervous at the end. And also, like, he went and got that Chinese shit that worked, and that's when he was feeling good. And that's when they, they're, they're feeling better about everything. It's starting to feel really great. And then it all goes to shit, including his skin. Everything goes to shit. And then he gets nervous, and he breaks out something awful, and it's worse than it's ever been. And that's when he has to make the speech. That speech... Give him the fucking whatever award now for that speech. That spe speech was amazing. Um, yeah, so, yeah, that speech was amazing. So, all that paid off is I thought the skin condition was super, like, why are they telling us this? What, is this really needed for the character? Yeah, because it was to show all the obstacles he went through, and it was a symbolism for it. His anxiety and his nervousness, it, his stress, it was symbolism for his stress. That was just so awesome. It was. So kudos. That's some of my best favorite stuff. Let's find an actress's name that I already forgot because we have to talk about her. Uh, Amara Karen played um, Chandra uh, Kapoor, the, the other lawyer who, yeah. So let's talk about this character. What was I saying about none of the good guys come up unscathed? Is she's a good guy. She was doing what was right. What happens? She loses her fucking career. Not her job, her career. She got, she's probably going to get disbarred and she got fucking fired for the big firm. Why? Because she wanted to do what was right. And then... She made the stupid mistake. And no, I'm calling them mistakes. They're not accidents, they're mistakes. Uh, Nas makes them this entire time. This is what makes them human. Is she falls for him, even though she doesn't even know, know him, and kisses him at the worst time. Yeah, and it gets her disbarred. Probably. We don't actually know. It's all that shit. Holy crap. So... I guess I just want to bring her up because she was really great. There was that uh, last episode, which by the way was like a hundred, or it's like an hour and forty minutes, and it just fucking flew by because of her. She, or uh, I mean, not because of her, but because it was just so good. Sorry, I'm looking down, but there you go. Had to find someone. That doesn't seem right. Let's go with that. Um, but it's, I'm not sure if that's right. But here I'll. Never mind. Sorry, I'm, it's called Unprofessional Movie Reviews. So in that last scene, or last episode when she's sitting in the courtroom and she starts to fucking cry because she knows she lost, there you go. 
That's how good this was. That's how good she was and how just broken down. She just broke down for that. It was great. Now I got one other person I got to talk about and then I'm going to wrap this all into the last episode bubble. And that is the detective. Not 100% sure his name, so I'm sorry. Uh, and I, I know I heard it a bunch. We've seen that character before and he was kind of tired, the like really good detective who's about to like retire, but he's like married to the job. Yeah, saw it before and he wasn't actually my favorite part. I liked him as a character, but he didn't really bring anything to the table. The other people did. And he was kind of a dick. He was. But at the same time, he did try to make those really nice decisions. Like, he gave uh, Nas the um, inhaler out of the goodness of his heart. But at the same time, he was also getting rid of evidence. So he was, like, fucking up. Um, so, I don't know. But let's talk about the other suspect. And I'm so mad at myself, I didn't look up his name, and I keep on fucking looking down at my phone, and I'm gonna give myself just like a second of scrolling to see if I find it, and then I'll stop, do 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 do, one more second, one more second, two episodes, three episodes, there we go, cool, I found it, uh, wow, I never knew that guy's name, Paulo Costanzo, Paulo Costanzo, aka Ray is who he's playing, Ray Haley, um, if you guys don't remember this guy, I'll say his name one more time, Paulo Costanzo. Paulo Costanzo was in a shit ton of stuff from our, like, teenage years. He was in Road Trip, and he was awesome in Road Trip. He was in a lot of those teen movies where we were growing up, and he was always really fucking good for, like, teen movies' sake. And I'm glad he showed up in this. So did he kill her? <laughs> he was the accountant. The way they threw that at us on the last episode and how they started throwing all these other people. He was kind of a conduit for uh, for John to find out about uh, the personal trainer. Let's shit. I'll get back to him. Let's talk about Ray again at the end. And I'm, I'm really sorry. I'm so jumbled. Let's talk about... Episode 5. The ending of episode 5. And that is when they find the burglarly, knife-stabby-stabby guy. And John chases him. And there's like the two minutes silence of them walking through that abandoned house. And he has that pipe. And then it flipped the blue screen. So there's a couple people at my work who watch this show. And I watch this show too. And literally everyone, including a couple people I ran into or friends of mine, all thought that John died there. They were, we were all in agreement... John died. We're all in agreement that that's why the blue light was like a morgue's table and he died then. But then, in the next couple of episodes, we don't even hear anything about that encounter. We don't even hear anything about that guy again and then they bring him up in court. That was so cool how they planted every episode, they planted another like possibly murderer. Save him for the trial. Possibly murderers save him for the trial. With the personal trainer, the stepdad, and the burglary stab steady guy. It was all just to plant seeds of doubt. And then the limo driver. It was all to plant seeds of doubt of... You have, like, this guy, Nas, does not fit the description of a murderer. All these people do. He was just the wrong place, wrong time. And that was really great for the trial. So yeah, that was awesome. I'm really glad they did that. Um, I thought it, it, it was a good way to make these eight episodes feel really small because they did go into that much detail on something that was going to be not much but besides a small little plot deal, detail later. It's really sweet. So let's talk about the last episode. He comes, he, uh, the Ray character gets into the detective's mind, the detective talks to him, pretty much decides, like, yeah, you're the killer, figures it out, tells the public defender, and the public defender, or not public defender, the, uh, whatever her name is, the attorney against the, uh, whatever, prosecuting attorney, I don't know what, I don't know anything about law, um, and it start, now plants the seeds down in her mind, and then when they do the split of, like, no, we're not gonna get anymore, it's six versus six, we can't vote anymore, it's a hung jury, I'm sorry. And the judge was like, damn it! And she's like, cool, 
I don't think it's this kid anymore. We're dropping charges. Ah! And it was all because of the detective. That was fucking awesome. Now, what was it the detective? What wasn't the detective was the disc to try to make it a mistrial. Now, who was that? Pretty sure that was Freddy. Which makes me like Freddy even more. He was trying to fuck up the file, or the, the trial. He wanted to make it a mistrial. That's awesome! <laughs> like, he's such a good character. I really like Freddy for doing that. And when he's leaving, and he turns back, when Nas is leaving prison, when he turns back, and he's about to say hello to Freddy, and he just doesn't. I really, like, I don't, I still don't know what to make of that scene. That was such a powerful scene. And he's just terribly boxing and looking the other direction. I loved it. So, I don't really know what to make of that scene, but yeah. <sighs> Anyways, enough about Freddy. Just because he got away free doesn't mean anyone here got off free. And that's what the whole point is what I got out of this. Is that he doesn't have to go to prison anymore. He's now smoking fucking heroin. When him and his mom are going to have like this really beautiful conversation, he like fucking lets go of her hand and goes and scores drugs. He's now feared by his community. He now fears people, like dislikes everybody. And he was the good guy who got a good ending but it still infected him. And that's just because that was what happened. It's, it's realism. I love it. It's, it's like Steinbeckian realism. And that's, that's it. That's what I love about it. Now, the detective is going to find out, you know, tr maybe actually chase down when the, when the one lawyer calls him, like, let's get this guy. I really like that, but I, I heard that if they do any more seasons of this, that it's going to be anthology, so it is going to be, like, true detective, it is going to be other stuff, so we're not actually ever going to find the ending of that, which kind of sucks. I talked for 22 minutes. I don't really know what else to say about this show. Um, really small nitpicky negatives. Like, kind of slow at parts. That's really it. This is an amazing show, and it's probably the best TV I've watched all year. I don't know what else to give you guys besides fucking love this show. Uh, have a good night. Bye!